Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a fabulous day. Today I'm coming at you with another installment for the Frequently Asked Questions Beyond the Review series. This is where I get to answer questions from you guys that weren't necessarily covered in the reviews that I've done on these bags. And the bag that I will be talking about today is the Chanel Jumbo Double Flap. All right, so let's get started, shall we? Starting with the first question from Erica Dimples About Life. Assuming you were undecided, what made you decide on the Jumbo Double Flap versus the single? If you had to do it again, would you have gone for the single? If so, why? Uh, great question. I do love both of them. I do have the double flap, uh, but with the single, I particularly love the fact that it's not as heavy, number one. And number two, you're really able to fit a lot more items in there because it doesn't have that double flap. Uh, but even with the pros that the single flap has, I would still end up going for uh, the double flap only because of structure. Uh, I guess you could say that I'm a little paranoid. When it comes to the single flap, it tends to lose its structure a little bit more on the sides. And knowing me and the way that I am, uh, I've always just appreciated a nice structured bag. Not that I don't like slouchy bags and um if you've been watching me for a while, I actually mentioned that I have the Chanel reissue, you know, on my wish list, and that doesn't always hold its shape as well as the uh, as the classic double flap. But you know, I don't know. I, I love the the single, and I think it's a fantastic bag. I think it's beautiful. But just for I guess my own paranoia, I would still end up going for the double flap. <laughs> and the next question from Terafin Sidker: I tried the jumbo in store, and I'm on the fence with this one. But how did you decide past the heaviness of the bag and lambskin versus caviar and just the overall size uh, great questions all right so let's start with the first one the overall size uh, the main reason why I decided to go for the jumbo at the time is because I feel that it's a lot more proportionate to my body frame. I did try on the maxi. I felt that it was a little too overwhelming, but I felt that this one was just right in the middle, you know, not too big, not too small. Plus I could end up fitting a lot more items inside versus some of the bags that I now have in my collection. So that's the main reason why I went for the jumbo. Uh, now, as far as lambskin versus caviar leather. Now, even though I am what you call a newfound lover of lambskin leather, um, I never thought in a million years I would ever own a lambskin piece because I thought it was way too delicate, it scratches way too easily, it loses its shape, it does this, it's the, it does that, you know, and yes, it's not as carefree as caviar leather, but it's not as delicate, as I said before, that people make it out to be, myself included. Uh, so I have been pleasantly surprised by lambskin, but even with that said, I would still end up going for caviar leather, and the reason that is is because I feel that this is a little bit more versatile in the sense that I can end up using it in the rain in the snow even though it doesn't snow here uh, but I wouldn't have to think twice about it I don't have to baby it I it's just one of those grab-and-go type of bags so even though I'm a big fan of lambskin leather and I think it looks fantastic on classic flaps uh, I just like how this one is just a tad more carefree and just you know it's it's almost like it's scratch proof I know some people say that they can end up scratching it nothing happens with it and with lambskin leather if you do scratch it you can end up buffing it out just with your finger some people end up using um, you know, some type of leather conditioner, but I feel that it'll still, you'll still be able to see that scuff to a certain extent. But this one, I mean, not that I'm going to do it, but you can end up just scratching it. If it rubs up against something, it won't be as noticeable because of the pebbles. So for that reason, I went for caviar. Plus I felt that over time, this one might be the safer bet between the two, just because, you know, I didn't know uh, how fantastic lambskin leather was. You know what I mean? <laughs> now, as far as the heaviness, all right, I'm not going to lie. It is a heavy bag. Uh, it's not as heavy as a Celine Phantom or a mini luggage or anything like that, but there is quite a bit of weight to it. And I've mentioned this in the review and a few other videos. Uh, this is the type of bag that over time, even if it's a couple of hours, you'll be able to notice the weight on your shoulder. Uh, and I've often said that if you have a shoulder pain, then this might not be the best option for you. Maybe a single flap because it's not as heavy, but I wanted to give you guys specifics as far as how heavy this bag is. Uh, this bag, without anything inside, weighs in at 2 pounds, 10.5 ounces. Uh, so it's not too, too bad, right? But just in comparison to the medium large, the medium large weighs in at 1 pound, 5 ounces. Uh, that's, you know, I mean, it, it's a pretty big difference, I would say, between the two. It is a pound difference. And then you add your items inside. Now, to give you guys even more of a, um, even more of a difference, with this bag, I usually end up carrying five to six small leather goods. It depends on um, on what it is that I want to carry. But let's say on a good day, the items that I would normally carry are six small leather goods. It's not going to be busting at the seams, but it is pretty packed, and that's how I usually end up using this bag. With those uh, six small leather goods, this bag ends up weighing four pounds, 14 ounces. 
that makes for a heavy bag, all right? <laughs> I don't care, but it, it, it makes for a heavy bag. And just, uh, again, to give you more of a uh, comparison, the medium large, of course, is not going to fit as much as the jumbo does, but I definitely end up maximizing the space in here, and I end up carrying uh, five small leather goods. This one, with, with five small leather goods, weighs in at two pounds, eight ounces. That's a two pound and some change difference between the two. So think about it, if you're walking around and if you have it on your shoulder, you're gonna be able to feel the four pounds a lot more than you'd feel the two pounds. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and uh, even though this isn't the frequently asked questions for the medium large, I think that's a pretty good weight for an all leather bag. Um, from Chanel. So uh, how did I get past the heaviness? Uh, like I said before, it is a heavy bag. I can't sit here and say, oh, it's so lightweight. You can't even feel it. I definitely do feel it as the hours go by. Uh, but the main reason why it doesn't bother me as much is because I think throughout the years, I've always gone for bigger bags and I always end up just carrying everything and the kitchen sink. I don't know what it is. I have, you know, thank goodness for the small bags that I have in my collection now because it really, <laughs> it really helps me to minimize how many items I end up fitting inside. Uh, but you know, it, 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 I can't lie. It, it makes for a very, very heavy bag. Um, but I still love it. And like I said, because I've used bigger bags and because I've carried so many other items inside, uh, the Phantom, for example, I think was, how many pounds was it? I think it was like seven or eight pounds. Then going into a four pound bag, this is this feels like it's nothing. It feels like it's super lightweight. So it's just because of the many years that I've been carrying bigger, heavier bags that it doesn't really phase me in that sense. You know what I mean? <laughs> but great, great questions. Uh, all right, next one from White Coat and Glitter. I do have a jumbo black caviar gold hardware. I bought it pre-owned from 2014. It's in great condition, but I noticed that my bag leans forward or bows down. Does it happen to your jumbo or is it really expected to happen over time? Can I do something to prevent it or revert it a little? I do store my bags correctly, but I'm not sure how the previous owner stored it. Uh, wonderful question, and I know what you're talking about, that if you end up laying the bag like this, it ends up just kind of leaning forward. I haven't had that happen uh, with my jumbo, uh, and I'm the same way that you are. I am super, super OCD, super anal about how I end up storing my handbags, but I can tell you that it ends up sitting in the upright position without a problem. Now, um, I don't, use this bag as often as my medium large and I did notice that on my medium large this one ends up just kind of going a little bit forward and you can notice it right there uh, and I don't know if it's because of the clasp uh, I tried to do a little bit of research on that I couldn't really find um, I, I really couldn't find any type of uh, answer as to why that happens, so that's why I think maybe it's because of the clasp or maybe it's because of the double flap. Uh, you have that much weight going forward, uh, but I would love to know if any of you guys know the main reason as to why that happens or if there's a way to, to prevent it from happening in the future. Um, I don't think that... I don't think that storing it will have any, or how you store it will have any bearing on it. I think it's just the overall design of how it happens because this one wasn't as, I, you know, to be honest, it wasn't as prominent when I first got it. And this is my most used Chanel bag, so maybe it does happen over time. Maybe it's just a natural characteristic. But if any of you guys have any information on it, please let us know in the comment section down below. I would love to know as well. Um, that way we can, uh, we can see if that's, if that's what it is. Let me put them side by side to see if there's a big difference. This thing, <laughs> it's a little bit harder to do it with. Here we go. <laughs> you can notice it a little bit more. This one just ends up sitting in the upright position. It keeps focusing on my face, sorry. So here we go. You can see that it's not as, it's not as noticeable. This one's not too, too bad, but you can still notice it. I notice it when I uh, try to take pictures of it that it just kind of seems to <laughs> go forward. So uh, I wish I knew the exact reasoning, but again, if any of you guys have any information, let us know in the comment section down below. Uh, all right, next one from Wendy. Do you, use, do you use your jumbo anywhere you go? I'm too scared to use mine because I'm worried it's too flashy. Uh, great question. I do use my jumbo everywhere, everywhere and anywhere, whether I'm going grocery shopping, whether I'm going out to dinner, whether I'm going to a wedding, it doesn't matter. I, you know, what I really like about the jumbo is that, uh, or just any bag in general, I'm the type of person that I will dress up a bag. I will dress it down. Sometimes I'll wear this with uh, cut off shorts and a tank 
tank top and my slides. Other times I'll wear a little black dress and my hair all done up. It's all a matter of personal preference, but oh yeah, I will rock any bag anywhere with any type of, uh, with any type of outfit. You know what I mean? I'm a very casual dresser. Uh, so, you know, I like that. It makes it, it makes the bag a little bit more, um, more versatile. You're able to transition the bag uh, very easily as well. So yeah, I say rock that bag. Heck yeah, don't worry about it. Yes, I know what you're talking about. It might be a tad flashy, but if you end up wearing it with, like I said, with jeans or with, um, you know, with a dress or whatever it is, just make the outfit your own and rock your handbag. <laughs> Next question from Late for the Party. I'm just wondering if the chain ever twists. Do you ever have to fix a link or two? I have a mini and the link right above the grommets twists around. It has me constantly looking over the chain. Um, all right, so on the jumbo, I've never had an issue with uh, the chain twisting. I really think that it's because of the weight of the handbag. However, with all of my other uh, Chanel bags, whether it's my medium large, my GST, or my mini, I have noticed that the chain ends up twisting. The first time I saw it, I thought there was something wrong with the bag. And just to give you guys an example, um, sometimes you'll notice that, for example, here's the chain, right? Here's the link. Sometimes the link will be a little bit, uh, I don't know, it's, it seems like it's a little bit more um, bunched up together. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see that or not. Sometimes it's a little bit more bunched up, or sometimes you feel like this leather part is a little, uh, it's kind of sticking out a little too much. And uh, I remember the first time I saw it on, on one of my other bags, I kept thinking, oh no, it's ruined. Something's wrong with it. But then I just started playing with it and uh, the link ended up, you know, kind of uh, coming, coming undone. But to answer your question specifically as far as the jumbo goes, no, I have not had that issue whatsoever. And I really think that it is because of the weight of the bag. At least that's what I'm thinking anyways. <laughs> Next question from Shopping with a Passion. This is my holy grail bag and I want to purchase it within a year. I don't know if I have the heart to actually pay the almost $6,000, but I want it so bad. I imagine myself sweating and my heart pacing. How do you go through with a purchase when you feel like this? My question is, what if it makes your heart sing but your wallet cry? This is an awesome, awesome, awesome question. Uh, all right, so when I went to purchase the jumbo, I, it was, it was one of those experiences that I will never forget. Yes, I had a great experience with the sales associate and just everything that went with it. But when I was at the boutique, I had my heart in my throat. I kept pacing back and forth. I kept thinking, I'm crazy. I'm crazy. I can't, why am I doing this? This is ridiculous, right? Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? And I just kept, um, I had conflicting thoughts when I was at the boutique, and I am sure that a lot of you might think, well, if you had conflicting thoughts, why did you go through with the purchase? Well, even though I had my heart in my throat, as I mentioned, and I didn't know if it was the right thing to do, and I always, I always ended up thinking, this bag is three times what my first car cost. And I don't know why I always say that. I think it's because my first car was a necessity and um, I don't, I mean, I don't need an expensive handbag. You know what I mean? If I can use any bag, it'll, it'll do the job, you know, but this was also my holy grail bag. It was a bag that I never thought in a million years I would ever own. And the main reason why I went with this bag, the main reason why I went through the purchase, or I went through the purchase is because I knew everything that I had to go through to save up for this bag. I saved up for a long, long, long time, you know, and I was really proud of myself. And I've always said that anytime I add any item into my collection, uh, as far as luxury goes, if it's not a necessity, I have to ensure that all of my other responsibilities are taken care of. The mortgage, uh, my bills, uh, insurance, everything has to be taken care of first in order for me to even fathom adding anything else to my collection. And I had the funds for it. I had the cash for it. And I kept thinking, no, 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 this is crazy. This is crazy many. I'm telling you, I must, I must have looked like a lunatic to people when I was in the boutique, you know, and I knew everything that I had to go through. I know what I had to sacrifice to, to save up for the bag, you know, and, um, at work and all that other stuff. And yes, not every job is going to be a walk in the park. We all have, you know, those days where you're just like, oh, get me out of here, right? Uh, and no, I don't get paid in favors. I get paid cash for my job. But still, there's some aspects of, of any workplace that I feel can get to, well, can get to me anyways. So I knew all the stuff, all the BS that I went through, everything that I sacrificed to save up for the bag and put money aside every chance that I could. And when I had the funds for it, I was thinking, okay, I have everything taken care of. I have the cash for it. I'm going to go for it. 
I'm gonna go for it because I deserve it. And you know, some people might think, why do you, why does anyone deserve a $6,000 bag? It's all a matter of personal preference. Some people choose to spend their money on, on trips. Some people choose to spend their money on golf clubs. Some people choose to spend their money on whatever it is. But I know that handbags has always been something that I have been attracted to ever since I was a little girl. Uh, and no, they weren't expensive handbags when I was little. Um, you know, and I just, lo I love bags. I am a bona fide handbag addict and I had the funds for it and I went for it, even with my heart and my throat because I deserved it. Why not? I, you know, I, I work hard for what I do and if I wanted to buy myself something nice, then I felt that, I felt that it was fine and I didn't have to justify it. You know what I mean? And it was one of the best decisions I have ever made. I've never looked back. It was an incredible experience even though I felt like I wanted to hurl in the beginning but after the transaction just getting that bag walking out of the boutique I was smiling I was grinning like an idiot from ear to ear because I was just like I can't believe it I finally got my holy grail bag something that I never thought would ever happen and I don't know about you guys but for me I'm not the type of person that can just bat my eyes and I have a new bag it takes I you know I have to there are steps for, for me to be able to acquire a bag. And sometimes I feel that when you end up saving up for those bags or for those items or whatever it is, when you end up saving up for it for quite some time, sometimes I feel that those purchases are that much sweeter. They are just that much better to enjoy. And it's not because it's a Chanel handbag by any means whatsoever. It's all of the meaning behind it, everything that went along attached to it behind it in order to make it happen. And it's kind of like, wow, I, you know, I did it. I did it. You know, I was so excited. So, um, yes, it might make your, your wallet cry. It made my wallet cry. Uh, but I made sure that I had the funds for it first. And when I did it, I went for it and I haven't looked back. Best decision I ever did to go ahead and go through it with it. So I know some people might, might, uh, disagree with me. Some people might think that I'm a little, uh, ridiculous for even, even, um, thinking about thinking about it in that manner but it made sense to me <laughs> uh, all right and the last question from Meg G I have the jumbo and I purchased it in cat in caviar in August of last year I don't use it often mainly because of the double flap being so fussy I appreciate how it helps the bag hold its shape but it's quite annoying when out running errands does the flap soften with more use and time? Uh, great question. All right, so as I mentioned, even though I don't use this bag too, too often, um, I'd have to say that I find that the double flap is just still a little stiff versus on my medium large because that's the one that I use, that I gravitate uh, more towards any time. That one definitely has ended up um, softening up to where it's not as noticeable, uh, but I still think that, you know, I don't think that it's too, too soft, if that makes any sense. So um, I haven't noticed that it's really softened up too, too much to the point where it's just like a breeze. It's going to be similar to this flap opening up just because of the type of structure that goes to this, uh, to this double flap here. So now I have not noticed that it has softened over time. If any of you guys have had that experience, please let us know in the comment section down below. Um, I'd like to know as well because you never know, maybe maybe this will be the year of the jumbo. <laughs> I feel like I say that every year. I'm like, oh, I'll start using the jumbo more and more, but I still keep going back to that medium large, my goodness. All right, you guys, so that does it for our Beyond the Review, frequently asked questions on the Chanel jumbo. Uh, and I hope that this video was helpful. I hope I was able to give a little bit more information. That way, if you're thinking about adding this back to your collection, then you have uh, that much more that can go into your consideration. Uh, but whether you go for the double flap, whether you go for the single flap, both of them are absolutely beautiful bags. Just keep in mind that the double flap is going to be a lot heavier than the single flap. Um, I really hope, I really wish that they added the single flap back into the collection uh, because I know that is a very, very popular bag. Uh, all right, so like I said, this is the second installment of this um, of this uh, series. So let's say we talk about the Alma BB next. I have it in the Damia Ben. I know I've been getting a few questions on that on Instagram. So uh, for the Alma BB, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section down below. If any of you see that someone else already asked the question that you are interested in, please thumbs up that comment so that I can end up answering the top rated questions. I wish I could answer all of them, but unfortunately, uh, I don't want to make I don't want to make the video too too long. Uh, but I will also be adding mod shots at the end of 
this video so you guys can see how it looks on my body frame. Uh, and I think I'm just going to take the mod shots from an old video. It makes it a lot easier. <laughs> call me lazy, call me whatever you want, but it makes it a whole lot easier. Uh, so I will add those at the end of this video. And for reference, I am 5'5 five five and I am on the curvy side. Uh, but again, thank you guys so, so much for watching. Next up is the Alma BB. Uh, and I'm going to try to shoot for two weeks from now. I know that um, it seems like I've been doing it every uh, every month. I'll try to shoot for two weeks, but um, August is a little bit of a crazy month for me. Uh, but if not, then I will try to get it out as soon as possible. And again, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button down below and hitting that bell so you are notified when I upload videos, which is anywhere from two to three times a week. And I will see you guys on my next one. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys. Thank <laughs> you.